During the last year or so that I have been putting up a lot of content, people have been asking me a number of times about why I switched from the Birdie to the Prompton platform, what my opinion is, what my experience has been. And uh, you can click below to my shopping pages and see all the bikes I am recommending and do your own investigation. And I also am getting close to publishing a book on this whole experiment, the bike that you see in front of you right now. That's my bike right now, except that the tires are no longer mismatched. But this this is basically what I have built. It's a maxed out Brompton. And I think it's legitimate to ask, since I already owned a Birdie, why not just put an electric kit onto the Birdie? And the Birdie I had was very close to this. There have been improvements since uh, 1996. No, not 96. In 2006, that's when I bought mine for $1,200. The current price, this is Singapore dollar. The current price is actually, in US, it's actually $1,400. So the price hasn't gone up much at all. This looks like a steal for me. $1,400 for a frame like this with the best front suspension in the business. And so I think the the first highlight of this bicycle is definitely the front suspension. It's actually based on a 1950s Italian design. I believe MV Augusta raced one of these motorcycles and the design was eventually discarded because it creates a softer and also heavy front. And so that's why I didn't like it. But the idea was this. I look at, for example, a Brompton. You, you hit uh, a five inch deep pothole and the whole front is going to dive into that five inch deep, deep hole. If you have a normal spring, like up and going up and down like that, like this is connected to the frame directly, the front of the frame, okay, you're gonna have a shock and a spring in it, and it's gonna be softer, but the front will have to go down five inches. And so the Italian engineers had this idea of suspending the front here, not here, putting the shock up in the front like it usually is, but it is really here that the front of the motorcycle is supported. This is where it's connected to the wheel. And so you hit a five inch pothole here and the wheel goes up like this but this thing moves at an angle so a five inch pothole might feel like a, a one inch hole and that is something you definitely recognize I mean just explaining it using images may not drive it home but once you s actually sit on a birdie and, and you ride it you immediately sense that the front has practically no feel unless you hit a really big pothole and the, the front wheel half of it disappears in it you're not really feeling much of anything because what they did was the the you hit the pothole and and you get a the pressure of, of five inches but this is communicated to the frame on a horizontal almost perfectly horizontal angle so what you are feeling is more like uh, as you are riding f forward, some obstacles, but not a dipping. There's very little dipping on the average road with a birdie. And of course, the most of the followers of this brand, of this particular model, are travelers. The full size of oh, the weight of the bicycle with an aluminum frame that you see here is about 25 pounds, about the same as the Brompton would be. Another thing that that you see here is there is no there are no hinges and by the way I've, I forgot to add as far as the front is concerned here is how it folds so it is an absolutely ingenious design some of the best German engineering ever they have combined the front suspension with a folding mechanism and you fold the wheel to the right of the frame kind of the same way as you would do with the Brompton. How would you do it with the Brompton? Well, it's sort of like that, but it it doesn't really... Let me show you a better picture. 
so here you see that the Brompton has a hinge in it and what the hinge means is that the frame is a lot shorter the whole fold is, is noticeably more compact whereas the birdie's wheel is kind of dangling here on the side and I actually bought a velcro to attach this this wheel this whole thing to the main to the top tube because it's not really something that it there is no snap you can't easily carry it it would just unfold there's a kind of a snap via a screw but it, it never really worked for me newer designs especially the monocoque design have improved this considerably and you can see new birdie bikes actually wield very easily but this is what I had and so you can see that there's a difference there is a noticeable difference the bird is a good 10-15% um, longer than the Brompton and this frame this top tube is not breaking it's a beautiful top tube to look at I had this, this exact same color I don't mind the red I would would have preferred the Ferrari red instead of the, this fire hydrant red but in any case um, so on the Brompton you are compromising for foldability there's no question that the compactness of the fold is is very good and so my option was to just put an electric motor like a kit onto this bike and I'm sure Green would have assembled something that I could install whereas they already have a prefab kit for the Brompton so this being my first build it was actually easier to just to go with that but that was not the main reason the whole point of building an e-bike was to absolutely outrun any road bike because I had so much harassment when I had my scooter you will read the whole story in my book so I just was really pissed off about the road bikes and I wanted to outrun everybody I wanted a kid that would not be restricted I could go 30 miles an hour at least so the birdie can take a hub the uh, hub motor here in the center of the rear wheel the problem is the front you cannot take it big because the uniqueness of the suspension means that the frame is pushing the wheel ahead the wheel cannot pull the frame if you try to pull this this thing with with the, with the front hub if you try to pull the wheel uh, like in this direction ahead this this uh, spring would probably just get ripped to pieces because it wasn't designed it was designed for pressure not for pulling and there is a latch here connecting it because this is a folding mechanism so because of this unique folding mechanism you're not going to be able to put anything to the front why would I want to put it to the front because I wanted to be able to pedal as I was going fast if you use a throttle that you can go as fast as you want to but I wanted a pedal sensor I wanted the migration to feel like a bicycle and in fact I installed um, I installed a, a thumb throttle here in the beginning but I just did not like the whole moped experience I wanted to have a pedal sensor and so you can see that there is a pedal sensor here um, as you turn the pedal there is there are these magnets in it and the sensor notices that the magnets are moving and sends a signal to the controller which is uh, this device and the controller is connected to the computer where you can see what you're doing and you can manipulate it so this was one concern that I wanted to be ri riding a small wheel bike at 30 miles an hour at least and that can only be done with a hub gear so hub gear is out of the question if you're gonna put the motor here and you can see if you put it in the front then you can have the hub gear and you can go pretty fast because the gear width in the hub is, is much better than with a derailleur so this derailleur system is not gonna drive you that fast it might do 22 miles an hour maybe 23 24 something like that uh, there are some derailleurs that are extra speedy but they require a special hub so you put a motor in there that, that's going to screw everything up you can't do it the only thing I could have done would have been to enlarge this uh, chain wheel 
I think the, the largest one you can get is a 52 or a 54 and I need I would have needed at least a 60 but continue that cur I mean consider that I currently have a 60 tooth chain wheel connected to a hub gear so I have really maxed out the speed and if you have the power to do it you could pedal at even 35 miles an hour with this setup that you see here but this setup is not possible with the birdie so the only way to electrify would have been to to be a moderate speed bike with that could do maybe 22 24 miles an hour and there was another thing the weight distribution if you look at some of the best sports cars out there if you look at for example bmw bmw claims that all models they sell have a 50 50 distribution this is the m2 their most recent thing and here is the article mentioning that it does have a perfect 50 50 distribution and i really think it's an ugly ugly bmw the front looks like a couple of toaster ovens maybe four toaster ovens in the front so it's really not a nice looking car but it has the goods it has a six cylinder en engine more than 300 horsepower and 50 50 weight distribution so this was actually not something i was planning to do but but i definitely had to put the motor into the front wheel not into the rear and here we come to the brompton just eyeballing it you can see that the brompton has a longer wheelbase you can see that the birdie has a short wheelbase even with this suspension trick that that the suspension here this this is really ahead of the whole frame so they are extending the wheelbase but you can see that the wheelbase is short and so the Brompton has a much longer wheelbase and the first thing you notice when you get on it after a birdie well two things the front suspension is completely gone there is no suspension you have forearm fatigue and it just the all that comfort is gone but on the other hand it's also not fluffy you have very precise stirring you understand where the front wheel is touching the ground and as you maneuver you turn the birdie has a kind of softish cloudy feel to it very good suspension but like a very cloudy thing and this is much more precise much more to the point but the other thing i felt was that this is a longer wheelbase so i just in a way I felt more stability the tiny tires I hated the birdie can take two two inch tires and they have some models that come straight up I believe the city might have they have this uh, birdie city which is well, maybe the touring would have it so there are lots of models yeah this looks like a bit this is the big apple so this would be this is a different frame it's a monocoque frame but the same short wheelbase and you can mount or you can order one of these bikes with the two inch tires you can see how much better the tires are i mean this is a dream boat for touring except that i wasn't buying this bike for touring i was i certainly wanted to do some weekend fun but mostly i just wanted to commute in manhattan and outrun anybody on a road bike that's about as much as I'm going to say about it. I'm going into more detail in the book. But um, so the skinny tires I did not like, but I did like the feel of a longer wheelbase, more stability. And the thing that I did not expect was most people who ride bicycles, even if it's a high end racing bike, like a bullhorn road bike, even then most of the weight is going to be in the rear. So most of the professional and even amateur racers try to bend over to the front which is a very uncomfortable and unsustainable position but it brings more weight to the front it's still not good but once I installed a 10 pound battery into the bag and an 8 pound motor in the front and maybe a couple of pounds for the controller and the wiring and everything all of that weight went to the front i immediately felt so much better weight distribution so much better turning better uh, maneuverability 
that it it once you have it you don't want to give it up I don't want to go back to a bike that's too heavy in the rear and practically all the weight is in the rear I weigh 150 pounds on a normal bike even on the Brompton maybe 25 pounds would fall on my forearms and onto the the handlebar and and there would be like a 130 140 pounds on on the rear which is just so bad especially around corners but even just switching lanes maneuvering all of that stuff so the birdie definitely gives you a lot more comfort but in a paradoxical way this was not expected but be besides compactness the Brompton in a way gives you a lot of performance because you can put the the motor in the front you can go as fast as you want to and you can still pedal above 30 miles an hour with the kind of configuration I had now if I replaced the triangle and installed something like a roll of hub I could probably be pedaling at 45 or 50 miles an hour and that's of course the magic of the roll of if, if you have the money to spend on it I was commuting to a Manhattan building the doorman didn't exactly like me using a bike and this birdie design does fit most revolving doors and it did fit uh, maybe within two inches of not breaking the glass but this was just so much easier so much more compact much easier bike but boy you really feel the bumps on these t teeny tiny wheels no suspension and the tires are 1.35 I actually succeeded in installing a 1.5 and I have done several videos on this this is a 1.5 this is a mismatched setup I just I was just testing it in the front in the rear I still have the the 1.35 Schwalbe I was very happy with the comfort and control especially the road feel the control gain so if performance is your game definitely get the the green speed scorcher I have a link below it's on my shopping page it's one of the recommended tires however now I have switched back to this front and rear because I'm not really racing anybody at this point the commuting days are over in my opinion forever and I mostly tour and I ride at 13 15 16 miles an hour that's about it it's all about just having fun doing rides with other people you can see the difference I mean the fold and you can even compare it to the modern birdie like this design and the way it folds now they've really fixed not so much the uh, the frame the the wheelbase is the same but it just folds much much better I mean you can see it right here unfortunately these are also more expensive bikes uh, 2500 this in US it must be like 1800 2000 that's still a real, really good price. I mean, I'm surprised at this Singapore website. And I'm curious about the what kind of equipment you would get for this kind of money. Obviously not a lot, but you get a hydraulic disc front and rear, which is amazing. And the derailleur is kind of a cheapy, cheapy Shimano. So nothing special, but boy, for $2,000... I mean, if somebody asked me today, would I want the Birdie or the Brompton for for touring and just fun riding, I definitely would take the Birdie, as, especially with the new fold mechanism that they have. Just, they have done it with small adjustments. But, you know, now that I have the Brompton, I don't think I want to sell it. I have tuned it a lot. I have made it really comfortable. I mean, you can see the seat and the suspension up here. So achieving this on a birdie would take some money to do anyway so if if anything if I would do anything to make it even better I would just replace the triangle and get a better hub gear either a Shimano or even a Roloff which of course would cost me more than the whole birdie I mean the new triangle six hundred dollars plus installation at a Roloff hub okay maybe a sh cheaper Shimano hub six hundred dollars you're talking about close to two thousand dollars to do this then I would just just buy the birdie but for what I wanted to do at the time I did it the Brompton totally fulfilled uh, the purpose and it did what I wanted it to do and a lot more 
and if the, your situation changes, it's not impossible that I might need the Brompton to commute again. So I definitely would not want to trade it in, but uh, they, each bike has its advantages. I think Birdie is for long range commute and travel, and Brompton is still for the short range commute and very, very space efficient, compact situations where you really don't have much space to keep your bike in. So I hope this answered most of the question. And I'll be back.